that was just the background to give you just the regular data. I'm sure you knew most of it, but, but the real data of, of how it affects elderly specifically. So um, what I want to uh, go now and talk about is really those principles of geroscience. And this is where we started with this graph that shows you the relationship between death, that's the Y, X, and age from variety of age-related diseases. And you can go, for example, with this blue line for heart disease, and you see that heart disease is rare in young people, and it goes from about five to 5,000 as we age. That's why uh, really aging is the major risk for heart disease. Now you can say, hey, just a minute, cholesterol, we thought it's cholesterol. Well, cholesterol is a threefold risk for heart disease. Aging is the major risk. And it goes on to cancer and goes on to diabetes and Alzheimer and everything else. But I want to bring here uh, this green line that present death from pneumonia. And, um, and, and the pneumonia is, re is relevant here because it's the inclusive kind of cause of death for older adults. It reflects if they die from uh, the virus, uh, the virus secondary infection, or this, uh, what's called an ARDS, an acute respiratory distress syndrome, they all will end up in, uh, as pneumonia in the death reports. And you see that pneumonia, death from pneumonia goes from, by the way, please notice this is a log scale, right? I mean, that's, that's the thing with aging. So it goes from one to, uh, to 1,000. And and this really uh, is at the heart of what we're thinking that um, we cannot anymore treat each disease individually. What we need to do is to target aging effect because only aging, uh, targeting aging effect will affect everything. Um, if we were just successful in heart, okay, we would get then pneumonia or Alzheimer's or, or cancer. It's only targeting aging that can provide us the, the ability to target uh, all of those. We are, uh, and, and so aging is the one that drives the diseases. And we are going to launch a study that's called TAME, I'll say a few words later, and George will, that is trying to flatten those things, those uh, diseases. In other words, we're going to target basic mechanisms of aging and rather than prevent one disease will prevent several diseases and we'll see how this example is relevant to the COVID-19. Um, so the geroscience is the field that deals with the promise of target, targeting aging and it has progressed already from the patient to the lab and back. And geroscientists have identified, or we kind of agreed on eight major hallmarks. It's all work in progress um, and things will move on, but those are the hallmarks of aging. I'm not going to go on each one of them, but to point out to two major things, look at the interactions between them. With every hallmark of aging, we showed that targeting it affects several others. In other words, in order to make progress, we really don't have to affect all eight. We can do pretty well by starting affecting some and not others. Also, notice that two of the hallmarks are immune dysfunction and inflammation. Obviously, those are the things that are very relevant to the COVID-19. Why? Uh, the virus gets to the elderly and what is the response of the, of the virus uh, to the elderly. Um, so um, another point here is that we're talking about going from promise to realizing it. There's a, a growing number of biotechs and pharmaceuticals in the field that are targeting each one of those uh, hallmarks. Um, so, um, so there is a, a progress all over. 
I want to make a point, although I highlighted immune function and inflammation, there are two things here to consider. There is the consideration of how do we change the immune dysfunction and the inflammation um, and, and prevent those two to happen. But there's also the point that we want the whole body to be more resilient to the sickness. So it's important to target aging everywhere in order not to get to this, the disease, but if you get to disease, to stand it uh, better. Now, our efforts so far in the field have shown that we can increase health span, which is the most important thing, and lifespan by in, in numerous animal models. And we've done it in many animals, uh, in worms and in yeast, in, in, uh, in, uh, in flies, in mice, in rats, in, in monkeys, by using uh, uh, probes uh, of the environment or doing genetic studies or using drugs. And in fact, the second point is that relevant geroprotectors or gerotherapeutics have been used in humans. And we're going to tell you more about metformin and rapamycin. The National Institute of Aging has a, a program that's called ITP, Intervention Testing Program. And I'm going to show you just two examples. One of them is treating a rapamycin, which is an mTOR inhibitor, which is an, a major nutrient sensing that is important to aging. At age 600 days, this treatment was started and the animals with their blue did not get the rapamycin. They got sick and they died while those that got the rapamycin had extended health span and they lived uh, longer as an example of the relationship with lifespan, although, as I said, health span is really the most important thing. A second example is the combination of rapamycin and metformin. In the ITP, those are the mice that live the longest, a 24% extension in their lifespan. So those are the two examples from GeroScience that we will uh, um, uh, um, go on uh, in the next part of the presentation. I want to uh, end up with uh, our challenge, and this is how to translate this achievement to human. Because when you have a disease, you have a biological discovery, biotech or pharmaceuticals develop the drug, and there's a drug testing. Our problem is the FDA and regulatory um, bodies do not see aging as a preventable uh, situation. And when that happens, when aging is not considered as a preventable conditions, healthcare insurers would not pay uh, for their clients to use the drug. And the second point is that pharmaceuticals will not develop other better drugs combination of drugs if there's no business plan. And what we've done as scientists, we, uh, formed um, this study that's called Targeting Aging with Metformin Tame that is launched by a foreign and friends. And uh, what we're going to show is first of all, the proof of concept that composite of age-related disease can be prevented by the drug metformin. And second, we had discussion with the FDA to obtain a new indication to delay age-related uh, morbidity. So what I'll do now is I'll pass it to uh, George in order to uh, pick up a little bit more about the immunology of old age and connect uh, metformin to uh, show that it's one of the drugs that can be tested uh, uh, apropos the COVID-19.